bless you, worship you. We exalt thee because you are a good God. We thank you because you've done it again. Because you are the God of again and again and again and again. That give you the privilege to come and recline at your table. We thank you so much for all that we've been eating and drinking. And we thank you for the why you are about to give us today to do a finishing touch in our lives. Father, I ask, oh God, that in your mercy, let your presence overshadow every one of us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, let the spirit of concentration, the spirit, oh God, to concentrate on the reason why we are here, as Mary, concentrate on the reason why you visited their, their family. Be released upon us this hour and afterward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My Father, my God, Amen. I am a little child. I know nothing but you. Lord, I depend on you, oh God, to speak your word. Daddy, I ask, oh God, that you show me mercy. Is there any sin in me that the enemy, the devil, is pointing and saying, because of that sin, you are not qualified to speak a holy word from a holy master? Father, have mercy upon me. Forgive me, oh God, and let your blood purge me, enter me, speak to me, speak to me, to the end that I and your children, we all shall be blessed together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit, please take over. And let your will be done. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying without you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we have a message with the throne of God, when it's something drop it to my heart and say, God, you help me to preach this message today. And as I pray, you will help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The message before us is titled Holy Communion. Holy Communion. A rebuke of selfishness, pride, and hatred. Holy communion, a rebuke of selfishness, pride, and hatred. And I was made to understand that this threefold sin is the mother and father of every other sin. When one of these sins is in you, you are capable of having every other sins in you. And the Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy said he came that he might deal with these sins in our lives. This sin was dealt with at the table of Holy Communion when Christ came. When the Lord shared his body, I mean, shared his body and his blood for me and you, this sin, this three great sins, so to say, was death and every other sin followed. In the Old Testament, eating of God and all as a sacrifice for their last supper was not able to deal with these things. The Passover they were taking was not able to do this. That's why he said, this is a new covenant which is able to deal with this. That's why when God told us a story in the book of uh, Luke chapter 10, I'll try to take it easy so I will get it clear. In Luke chapter 10, when it told us a story of the Good Samaritan, in verse 30 to 32, say, and Jesus answered, said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among this, which, which stripped him of his remnant and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest 
all the you no know, priests there, they were the one in charge of all those things they were doing. Doing the sacrifice, doing the Passover. But the priest met him. He said the priest that 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 way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, in the other side. Why? Because his heart was not dealt with. Because the pride was still there. Hatred was still there. Everything that had to do with sin was still in him. We are going somewhere. And likewise, a Levite, a man of God, these are people who take the who do sacrifice every day. These are people who eat the, the Passover every day. But the pride in their heart, the hatred in their heart, the selfishness in them will not that it. But a certain, sorry, 32, and likewise a Levite, where he saw, well, a Levite, when he was at the place. Came and look on him and pass by on the other side. Levite pass by. These are people who were worthy of emulation. People who were in charge of all the sacrifices they were doing. But all those sacrifices could not deal with their heart. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, from verse 11. And Christ become an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with her, that is to say, not of this beauty, neither by the blood of gold and calf. You know those days when they are doing Passover? They don't use, use uh, they use, they kill animal. They eat it with, with haste. I want you to go and study Passover very well. Neither by the blood of goats and calf, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if by, for 13, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, speaking the unclean, satisfied to the purifying of the flesh. It can only deal, the one they were doing was only able to deal with the flesh. But selfishness, pride, and hatred, they are the seed of the spirit. Selfishness, hatred, and pride, this three things. They are the sin of the spirit and no sacrifice of human, human blood, no sacrifice of animal blood apart from the sacrifice of Christ is able to deal with it. Verse 14. How much more sh shall the blood of Christ who through this eternal spirit, spirit to spirit, who through the eternal spirit offer himself with that spot to God, pour your conscience. Pour your conscience. And these three things, it, it operate in the conscience of people that is seared up. Pride, hatred, and selfishness. Anyone that has it, their conscience is always seared up. With pride, you can do anything. With pride, you can kill. With selfishness, you can do anything to gain whatever. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And with hatred in your heart, you can go any mile to destroy. So killing, stealing, fornication, whatever you can think of is wrapped up in these three things. And they are wrapped up in a seared conscience. That's why the Lord came to deliver us from this sin. But for, I'll tell you again. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit of himself, without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, 
to serve the living God. With this three for sin, no matter what you are doing, you are wasting time. The reason why the Lord brought us together, making us to eat him and drink him, we will know more later, is for him to enter me and you to give us a conscience like his own, conscious void of hatred, conscious void of selfishness, conscious void of pride. And when you have a heart free of all this, every other sins bow before you. That's why the Lord gather us from all works of life so that he will enter me and you, put our conscience from this sin so that every other sin will be at the past. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter two, from verse one to eight, that if there, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bower of mercies, to fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like my dead, that ye be like my dead, have the same love, be of one accord, of one mind. This can only be possible if we avoid of these three things. For this to happen in the life of any man, for we, or a family, to be able to do this, we must be void of selfishness, pride, and hatred. Verse 4, verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. What bring all this selfishness and pride and hatred? Let nothing be done by strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let one let each one esteem other better than themselves. This can only be done when selfish pride and hatred is not there. And the Lord know if he, if he leaves us this way, without him bringing us together in the table of Holy Communion, entering me and you, the apostle, remember when the Lord was about to go, the apostles were already striving to the themselves. Who will be the greatest? Who will be number one? So if I leave these children this way and I did not enter them, they will destroy themselves and hand it over to the generation to come. That's why he did what he did. Verse 5. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, how can this mind enter me and you? Is by we eating him and drinking him, we'll see it as time goes on. Let this mind be in you. This mind, no matter how Christ followed the apostles, no matter all he told them, they could not have this mind until he entered them by giving them his own flesh and his own blood to eat and drink. Verse 6. Who be in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made itself of no reputation, void of pride, void of selfishness, void of hatred, and took upon himself the form of a servant. How can you and I get to this level unless we also become like him? Unless he enter us, take away that beggarly element conscience from me and you, and be the one dwelling in me and you. But made himself of no reputation and took upon, his, upon himself, upon him, to the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. It, uh, be found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Anyone having the spirit of pride, hatred, and selfishness, you cannot be in subjection 
to God. Every other sees and fat your finger. And for me and you to be free of all this, and uh, to be able to fulfill a fish, a Philippians chapter 2, 1 to 8, the Lord came and entered me and you through offering of his own blood and body. Brethren, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, for who know, for who had known the mind of the Lord? Who have known the mind of the Lord? That he might instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. How can this be possible? Who have known the mind of the Lord that he may pray and go with answer? That he may say, Lord, I, I, I want to make it in rapture and the prayer will be answered. But we have the mind of Christ. How can we have the mind of Christ? How can we do this? By letting his DNA enter me and you. By letting his blood flow in our veins. By letting our components, everything about me and you, become the replica of who Christ is. And this can only be possible when we eat him and drink him. Brethren, this is why he gave us his body and blood that we may be able to keep his commandment. What is that commandment? John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. A selfish man cannot love you. No matter what you do for a selfish man, he can never love you. Until you cut your head for it, he will never love you. A man that has this kind of hatred, there's nothing you will do. Unless that spirit of hatred is, is taken away, on a man that has the spirit of selfishness, hatred, and pride, no matter what you do, you are, you are just wasting time. But the Lord has commanded me and you, love ye one another as I also love you. And you know that this is not possible unless something is done. That's why he never left me and you empty. He has to give himself to me and to you so that we can become like him. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15 to 17. First Corinthians 10, 15 to 17. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Yes, it is. The bread which we break is not the communion of the body of Christ. Yes, it is. Why did he give us his blood and his body? So that we can be able to fulfill the new commandment in John 30, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. I can only love you when I know that we are one. I can only love you when I know that we are not one. That's why the body and the blood that he gave to me and you, this is the component, the complete Christ. Verse 17, for we be many are one bread and one body, for we are all partaker of that one bread, of that one, that one Christ, Jesus. Do not enter me and you. Take away every sort of ego, egocentric, selfishness, hatred, pride from me and you and bind us together as one that we may be able to fulfill his joy as it's written in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. For we are many and one bread. For we all are partaker of that one bread. Who is that bread? Who is that man? Jesus Christ. That is 
the ultimate reason of Holy Communion. That we all can speak one language. He brought all the apostles together and bind them together through Holy Communion. That's why I said, drink ye all, no selfishness. Drink ye all of you. Make sure everyone eat a drink of it. Why? Because the mindset of selfishness was a bad to take away from them. The mindset of hatred, who will be the best, who will be the leader, was a bad to be taken away from them. And uh, immediately they ate him and drank him. I believe their eyes was open. Hey, Peter, I can see we are one. John, I can see we are one. That time when Peter was saying, okay, I will be the best, he said, that spirit was just away. And that is the same reason why the Lord is giving me his body and his blood to eat and drink every day. You know why? Because the first testament could not do it. No matter all the priests, all the levites we're doing, but because the body of Christ and the blood of Christ have not entered them, they could not practice the true love they are supposed to practice. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, the Lord gave us himself so that we can have his own mindset and think of others the way he think of us. It was the love he had for me and you. The Lord is, is, is a set of God. Everything is gloomy for him. But yet because of my thoughts, he came down and died for me. Why? Because his conscience is a glittering conscience. The reason why you and I don't feel for each other, so that we even pray for each other in our closet, is hard. Why? Because of that conscience sealed with hatred, selfishness, and bitter uh, pride. God will deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24, let no man seek his own. Let no man seek his own. The reason why the Lord is giving me and you his body and his blood so we can be able to, to get to this level. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. No selfishness, no pride. Why? Because we are not like him. Everything about me and you is the mindset of Christ. Hatred no more. But because there's no hatred in heaven, he wants you and I to live as though we are already in heaven. So he came and introduced to you and I the life in heaven. So he gathered them and gave them the life lead in heaven. The same thing he has revealed to me and he's saying this is the life I want you all to live. The life void of hatred, selfishness, and pride. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after he introduced this letter to them, they never stopped. That's why you and I, if we want to survive the heat of this world, you and I must continue to eat him and drink him. If you and I are not ready to be found what on that day, we must keep eating him. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 2, 41 to 43, then they that gladly receive him, his word, were baptized. And the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine. What is the apostle doctrine? What we are doing today. The apostle doctrine is the doctrine of love of unity, 
of oneness, of bond that cannot be broken. That is the apostles' doctrine. And they continue with it. And fellowship, and in breaking of bread, eating holy communion together, and in prayers. Verse 23, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. If you and I must also do the same thing, we must embrace what the Lord has introduced to me and you. We must embrace him with all our heart. Allow our conscience to be purged. Allow us to begin to have his own mindset. Allow him to deal with every iota of pride, selfishness, and hatred in me and you. And you see how God will be moving on this mountain. See how God will be moving your family. Before you call, he's, answering, he's already answering you. Why? Because it's not the one dwelling in you. You are no more the one living again. It's not the one living in you. Praise that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why when Apostle Paul came to Corinth, he saw what we were doing. He said, no, 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 no. This is not the purpose. The purpose that the Lord gave us his body and his breath is that we may be able to share as we may be able to love one another. But what I'm seeing people doing is different. Where is this selfishness come from? Where is this hatred come from? And it gave them the understanding of Holy Communion, which the Lord is also giving me and you today. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 20. 1 Corinthians 11, from verse 20 down. When ye came together, therefore, unto one place, this is not to take the Lord's supper. It's bigger than what you think. This is not to take the Lord's supper. 21. For in eating, everyone take care before others. It's all supper, selfishness. Selfishness. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. And in this context, this go beyond just us here. If you are happy that you have food in your house, everything is rosy, and if anybody on this mountain is hungry, we are not. We are not in apostles' doctrine. We are coming together right now. It's not just to come and take the holy communion. Is to know the reason is for us to become the, the, the replica of Christ Himself. See, some are eating and some are hungry. But now, and I ask you, how much Holy Communion will you eat and drink and you be full? It's beyond what you see here. It's talking about the selfishness of the people. You come together, you see your brother and sister hungry. You don't care about it. This is not the doctrine of Christ. The reason why Christ brought us together from Canada, from wherever you are, is for us to look at each other's back, to know how we can help each other. To know how we can see this person the way I saw this person just now, mm -mm. my sister, God bless you. The way I saw you just now, I hope all is well. Oh, my sister, this is the reason why Christ is bringing us together. That we may share love. So that we can be able to give to one another. Say what? Have you not house to eat and drink? Eh? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not. It's not a time to show up. Let me dress well and show uh, sister, uh, the other sister how rich I am. Let me show that sister that I am this and that. No. It's time for us to look into one another.
What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. The Lord is saying the same thing to some of us here. It might be everybody. I praise you not because there's still pride in you. I praise you not. You have been eating me and drinking me, and yet you don't understand the reason why I'm doing this. You don't understand why I'm gathering you all together so that I can show you the lifestyle in heaven. No matter what you think you are doing, I praise you on this. So long, you still have hatred in your heart. You still have pride in you. You are still selfish. I praise you not. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then, not give up understanding. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Don't do a bad betray him. He was still loving. Let me tell you this, brother and sister, no matter what you are going through, that must not take love out of you. No matter the situation, that must not take love out of you. No matter what we have done to each other, the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 8, why we were yet sinner, Christ died for the ungodly. And he said in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, or thereabout, the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Verse 6, all ye have gone astray. God is own way, for we all have gone our, our own way. But God have laid the iniquity of us all upon him. That is what the Lord is doing among us so that we can also know how to help each other. How to love each other. That is the essence of holy. Holy communion. Check the dictionary meaning of communion. To unify. Love. In holiness. Holy unity. Holy. Peace in the family. Holy. Humbly, humbly ourselves to one another. Holy shedding. That is the essence of holy communion. It's bigger than the last supper they were taking. Then they will kill goats and quickly eat it in the night. And they rush out of Egypt. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I yeah. pray. The Lord will teach somebody as he's teaching right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 22, 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Not just only to eat the bread. This do also. Poor, making many rich. Sick, but praying for those who are sick like you. In pain, but you close your own and you pray, cry and pray for someone who is in pain. This is exactly what he did. Just as he washed their feet, this do in remembrance of me. Remember that I, I am love personified. Whenever you show love, you remember, you remember me. It's beyond just eating and drinking. The spirit behind Holy Communion is a big one. It's a, it's a, it's a great one. Whenever I'm loving this child, as Christ demanded, I'm doing Holy Communion. As I'm praying for you in my house, doing everything to make sure you're happy, I'm communing with your spirit. And uh, that is exactly what God said. I should do. do this as often, as often as I pray for you, as often as I love you. I'm sure the Lord did. So he come, and he said, if you read further, in uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 15 and thereabout, he said, I will eat not of this bread, or drink not of this uh, uh, this uh, this wine. Let me paraphrase. Until we do it together. What? What do they do in heaven? Love. 
I am no more here to show you all this love until you we meet in heaven and show this love again. But meanwhile, make sure you love one another now while you are still at. Is somebody getting getting what they're saying? The life live in heaven is life of love. The food they eat in heaven is love. No physical bread and all this food there. The what they eat in heaven is Christ itself. The glory of Christ is the food they eat there. So he's saying, love one another now. Let your, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is the will in heaven? Love. Love. And this is what the Lord has come to establish through Holy Communion. It's much more than just the bread and the drink we are drinking. It's the Lord himself, love personified. Go help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 25. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he has sucked, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This one is the new one, the one you were doing. That one was even done in hatred. You are eating, you are looking for who committed adultery to stone. While you are eating, you are looking for a woman you are lying, but you are looking for a woman who comes and does it to stone to death. This one is a new one that has to do with love. Not the one that you left Egypt when it, uh, the firstborn in Egypt was destroyed. This one, there's no blood of man will be shed. This one. That one, blood was shed. And remember, as we're eating the way, I'm more than, or you, you were killing and killing and killing, but this one, you don't have to kill. This one, you will love the Amorites. You will love the Muslims. Love the Hindus. Love everyone that you meet. Not the one you will eat today, Passover. As you are going, you meet people, you, you finish them. No, this one, it's not, it's not like that. This is a new one. That everything wrapped up in this is about love. It's name praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, so take it. Verse, I come again, verse 25. 25. After the same man, he took the cup when he has stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as, as, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. What do you remember about him? How he suffered and died for you. When you remember him, you will now also know how to do the same thing to others. As he asked them in that, uh, he, uh, Luke 22, around verse 33. He says, now, in, the, in these two, the good Samaritan and the, uh, the priest, which one now is the brother of them? He said, the good Samaritan, he said, go and do likewise. Go and show love. Go and become me until I see, you see me physically in heaven and we shall be together in heaven. So if we are expecting, okay, let's, uh, maybe when I'm going to heaven, I, I carry my cup along. You may be surprised, you don't see any bread there. I will see there is the radiant of the love of God, the glory of God. That's why Paul says, heaven is not, it's not, of, it's not, a, it's not a eating and drinking, but it's of love. Have you not read it before? The kingdom of God is not in, it's not of eating. Romans 19, verse 17. Hallelujah. Romans 14, 17. God bless you, my blood wife. My blood wife. Romans 14, verse 17. You can read it. So if you are there, you can read it, sir. Romans 14, verse 16. Say, so let not. 14, 17. Yes, Romans 14, 17. Okay. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. This is exactly what it came to establish. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, 
but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, get what we call, we call spirit. You don't need to start eating and drinking again, but that joy, that peace in the Holy Ghost, that will be the food we'll be eating. Uh, the Lord is saying, let me establish it in you now. As you eat me and drink me, you become like me. So on that, when you get to heaven, it's not be strength to you again. And how can this happen? By eliminating hatred, selfishness, and pride, which is the father and mother of every other sin out of me and you. And I know as we eat him and drink him today, this threefold cock sin, the, 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 the father and mother of every other sin, the chronic destroyer of human, of believers, the Lord will destroy them, take them away from me and you. We will never know hatred, pride again, and every other sin. We also bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then, come instruction. Verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. How can this be? You are eating. You see, uh, you are not submitted your heart to be dealt with. You don't know the reason why you are eating it. Just as he's telling us now. You don't know the reason why the Lord is giving you what, what he wants to be after you have eaten it. Just eat it. And after eating, you still have that hatred. You still have that bitterness in you. You have not designed a lost body. Uh, through this preaching now, I pray this for discernment. We enter us and will not eat him unworthily in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Uh, many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. I want us to start, keep, start judging us yourself now. Lord, um, as I said, what we say, I'm a woman of unclean lips. Deliver me. Lord, I can see, feel some iota of pride in me. This is not how you want me to be. I can see, feel, I can see, say selfishness, egocentric in me. This is not who you want me to be. I can see, see hatred in me. This is not who you want me to be. Lord, let your blood and your body chase them away from me so that when joy shall come, I will not be judged with the word. Verse 34, I will end with this. And if any man hunger, uh, let me say three. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another, meaning no selfishness, no hatred, no pride in us. We humbly wait for each other. We humbly think about each other. And this is just, this is beyond on the mountain. This year, we must learn to think of each other. As I'm doing this now, I, oh, I, 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 I pray my brother is also able to do this. Our God is blessing me now. Oh God, please. Make it complete. Let that my brother be also blessed. That is what the Lord is saying. Verse 34. And if any man hungry, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. For the Lord in spirit have entered me now to come and set the rest in order. The rest is what is setting in order now. So after now, the Lord expect your eye to continue in this doctrine, the doctrine of love, this unity. Brethren, I want us to go into prayer. I say, Father, I've heard you. You have given me a clearer understanding of the reason why you always gather us together. 
to eat and drink you, that we may become like you. Lord, today as I eat you and drink you, every iota of pride, hatred, selfishness in me, let them be eliminated completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and pray. Amen. That the way I know myself, I to be like you, to be like you, to act like you, that is love like you. Let your love be love to me, Father. Oh, love for the everlasting Father, help me to share, help me to do everything in love. I will my good in love in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. To give bread to envy and jealousy is not hard. Twins. When selfishness and hatred are more, are more than father, their product is what? Envy and jealousy. That's why there's so much hatred in Jesus Christ. It's so that's why I was saying Matthew 27, 27 verse 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. I want us to pray. Father, as I eat you and drink you today, that spirit of, that is in me, making me to envy my brother, jealous, backstabbing, doing, looking for how to climb and pull another down. Maybe it might not manifest now. It would have manifest later. Father, let your body and your blood enter me and destroy that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and pray. Amen. Amen. Let's call it 10 verse 24. He said, Let no man seek his own. It's a very big word. Let no man seek his own, but every man and no, that's wealth. Meaning, pray more for evil your person. Lord, this person cannot go through this. No, 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 no. I cannot be living in hell and my brother, my sister is living in pain. To see that pain is yours. To seek other people's health, to seek other people's joy. I want to pray as a father today. Mm. The grace to fulfill this commandment, to seek other people's joy, to make sure I do all I can do to see my brother and my sister happy. I receive that grace today in the name of Jesus Christ. Open Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, anything I have to do, Father, I don't mind to see my children happy. Father, Lord, give me that to be happy. Be happy to see anything that they are happy to see. I don't like to pray. Amen. 
the one, one reason why some of us cannot wake up in the to pray is because we are selfish. We don't see any, any need to pray for somebody who is dying out there. But as you go and look at it, Nigeria has been very well. My wife is sleeping very well. So what do you need? Go and sleep. Because you are not being oppressed. You are not being depressed. But you have forgotten there's a member on the mountain. Right now, it's under pressure. So you don't, have, you don't see any need to pray, to wake up to pray. That's why the devil has so much afflicted us with spirit of laziness. But you know, we are selfish, we are egocentric, we are self-centered, and we hate one another. We don't see any need to tarry as an intercessor for somebody who don't even know you, who's not even there. You'll be saying, hey, no, but I cannot pray. Yes, you cannot pray. Why? Because you are selfish. If that thing is burning in your heart, I tell you, laziness will jump away. Let me ask somebody here, a question here. Can you be so lazy that they'll give you an appointment in the office? Maybe they give you an appointment to come and sign a contract for work. Can you be so lazy you will not go? No, sir. No, sir. You cannot no, sir. be so lazy you will not go. You will say, Grace, I can't do a job early in the morning. In that snow, it went to enter. You will see my sister, see my brother. You will wake up, wash your face, and go. But because we don't see any need to pray for that brother that is dying, because we believe it is well with me and you, we don't see any need to wake up in there to pray. And we are saying, hey, Satan, you are not. Why did Satan not stop you from going to that to the office? Why did Satan not block me and you from doing that thing that we are doing? That is prayer is stopping at you because he, he has checked our heart. Because we are lazy people. I mean, we are we, we hate one another. We don't love towards the need. Just our Lord, plus God, man of devil, go to sleep. We are going to pray. The Bible, I was talking with you, the Bible says in John 30, verse 4, John 13, 34, a new commandment. <laughs> it's a commandment to a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another is a serious one. As I have loved you, if it's, if it's less than the way you love me are you, there's a problem. <laughs> Go ahead me. That ye also love one another, and people of God, to make heaven, eh? hmm. Hmm. to make heaven. Eh? This is a commandment. Oh. This is not just instruction. Just as the third commandment, it gather all and wrap it in one place, in one. This. And you see, see me and say, go see the doing anyhow. Me and uh, uh, sorry, sorry, see the hating one another. We are saying God rapture is a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. Unless we understand the reason of this Holy Communion and pray earnestly, Lord, today I receive the grace to obey this commandment. The only commandment He gave to me and you when He came to this earth. This new one, this new commandment, Father, as I eat you and drink you today. The grace to love my brother, <laughs> to love my sister as you love me. I receive that grace today. From now on, I will not disobey this commandment again. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. Amen. Amen. My Father, my God, Lord Jesus, your Father, I drink your blood today. I receive the grace to obey this commandment. Jesus Christ, Father. 
Lord, Father, help me to love you. Nobody can enter your kingdom because I need me the grace to love my brother, my sister, my brothers and sisters. Not to bad them in their back, not to stab them. Help my brothers and sisters. Help me to love you. Help me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ, here we pray. Amen. Have no other prayer. Let me believe for the book down to the pew. Let me believe no more envy, no more jealousy, no more backbiting, no more backstabbing, no more sitting down in your house. It's not to be praying, you'll be discussing matter that does not concern you. You carry phone, you don't have anything to say. All you'll be saying is, Apostle Manuel did not do this. He did that. That sister did not do this. He did that. He should stop now. If you have any offense, call the person direct. If you cannot call, may churn forever. Somebody hearing me? Because mm-hmm. this is a serious matter. We heard the message in the morning. Your mouth, pin it this year. Because what's ahead of us is, is, is serious. Are you out there? You're not born again. You have heard the word. Thank God you are here with the spirit of communion. Surrender to him that have the power to be holy. Have the power to love. Have the power to live as though you are already heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. Let him have your life now. Surrender your soul to him. Let him become the Lord of your life. If you, if you also hear you were born again, but you basleted because of some situation that seen now, the communion has reunited you back to God now. Please return back to the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. If you have done that, and thank God for your life. Please, for those who just got born again, call on any of the men of God on the mountain for baptism. The Lord will baptize you with through them, pray with you, and uh, whatever God will use us to do, we will gladly, humbly do it. The spirit of meekness in Jesus Christ, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I worship you. I exalt you because you are a good God. I thank you, oh God, because you are never tired, oh God, of revealing yourself to you to us day by day. Father, you have done it again. I ask, oh God, the grace, oh God, for us to absorb the word and make it do of it. We all receive that grace now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, have I spoken out of context? Father, is there anything I'm supposed to say I did not say? Have mercy upon me. Is there anything I'm not supposed to say I've said? Please have mercy upon me. And let your name forever be glorified in our life. Father, that this message is a very it's a, it's a very dicey one. I ask, oh God, please may this message not stand against me not against any of us on the last day, but let it be a propeller, a channel that will take us all into your kingdom. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, I pray you can't give up. Amen. Amen. And if you know the Lord that bless you, why don't you give me a clap of free? Amen. Amen. So let's go to the practical now. Let's start it. As the song is like just a song, we eat him and drink him, we become like him. Amen. Amen.